Hi, today we're going to talk about mixed metal. Mixed metal was done by the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russians, uh, among others. And so we in America copied those items. And what was interesting, however, was we took their forms, we copied lib literal, liberally. You know, so we would take pictures from tapestries or copy pieces in their entirety. And that's how we started. However, we have some really good silversmiths in the United States, and they started with copies, and then they went on to create their own pieces with their own ideas. I'll show you some pieces of, of mixed metal. So here's a Tiffany sugar shaker. It has a very Chinese or Japanese look to it, oriental. It has uh, gold leaves, it has a little bird, and it's all hand hammered. Beautiful piece. All the major companies did mix metal. Here's an example by Whiting. Here's a water pitcher. It has acid etched fish, but it has gold applied waves on this piece. Beautifully done. Here's, they didn't just do silver. Sometimes they did the opposite. In this case, this tea caddy by Gorham is copper and then it has silver applied flowers and crabs and dragonflies. Uh, really a, a spectacular piece. Another example by Whiting is this nice fruit bowl. And what's more appropriate than having copper fruit of various types on the side of this hand hammered fruit bowl? These pieces I'm showing you are all circa 1880. They did every form you can imagine. Here is a bell by Whiting. Again, it has copper appliques. Another company that was famous for their mixed metal is Schiebler. Here we have a sugar and creamer with one of his favorite things, bugs. Sometimes they inlaid also, and here we have a little compact with a gold rabbit on it. Also, talking about going beyond. So here, a Gorham piece, they took Japanesque items, like this bird and the butterfly, and then they put it on a Turkish-inspired uh, coffee pot. Um, so, you know, that's one of the ways that they went beyond. They took the best of the mixed metal ideas and made them their own and went beyond. So those are the pieces that we have to show you in the hollowware. The flatware was just as exciting. The best of the, the mixed metal, I believe, was done by Tiffany. Uh, they had probably their master, uh, best thing they ever did was Tiffany Lap Over Edge Applied. Um, started in 1878. So here is like a salad serving fork with turtles. Here's a piece with crabs. Flowers is always a popular motif. I love this soup ladle that has a frog on a lily pad and then the, the um, clouds in the sky. One that came in this week that I really like is this carving set with this great big lobster on it. So uh, very Japanesque, very interesting pieces. Uh, these pieces, as I said, are all from the 1880s. They're quite expensive, they're quite desirable. The values are going up. And I always like to think that there are opportunities for someone who's just starting. And for that reason, there, there is mixed metal that is not expensive. In the year 1952, Gorham came up with five patterns that had 18 karat gold applied. And um, for their day, they were very expensive. At that time, a place setting of Chantilly 
uh, was about $27, and these patterns were $125 a piece. I think that they were a failure, you know, as far as as um, popular during the 50s because of the very high price of it. We don't see much of it, but it doesn't command a very high price. Some of these patterns include golden wheat, golden tipped, and golden snowflake. All of them on the back say sterling plus 18k. Um, so, so they have gold wheat on this piece, but they have an actual gold bar across the top. Um, and as I say, prices are very inexpensive. For example, a teaspoon of one of these patterns is about $50 retail. I sometimes wonder when we're selling these pieces whether the value of the gold might be that much, but you know, it is a good way to start mixed metal. Other companies did a little bit of that. Here is one by Frank Smith. Again, it says sterling plus uh, 14K on the back. And indeed, it has, uh, in this golden age pattern, uh, it has a gold flower on the piece. So, you know, very interesting that, you know, about 75 years after most mixed metal stopped that there were, was a revival in the 1950s. Thank you.